Hello guys and welcome to Solar Project Part 3 which I decided to start a little bit early. As you can see I have none of the lights on right now and that's because uh, the power was knocked out from a tropical storm that just rolled through here. The power's been out for about 10 hours. I decided to go ahead and start with this project a little bit early because I would like some uh, uh, power to charge some devices and I just completely, well not completely, but this battery's sitting at about 30% uh, right now and I do have one sitting right under my desk that is full so I'm gonna go ahead and hook that one up in parallel uh, to get this system back up and working so I can charge my laptop and do some integral calculus yay uh, so yeah, I did size the system a little bit too small, so I'm going to throw an extra battery into this and I'm also going to add an additional 50 watt panel to the setup outside. I'm going to talk a little bit more about what I plan to do uh, tomorrow when I have more time. It's getting dark really fast and I want to get this setup back up and working so I can also turn on some uh, LED lights as well and I'm not left in the dark at night. So uh, let's go ahead and hook up that battery. Okay, upper battery is hooked up and ready to go. It's getting really dark. I'm gonna uh, throw this back under my desk and get some LED lights on. Okay, so I put everything back under my desk. I turned the lights on that are connected to my solar system and literally, 30 seconds later, the power came back on. So, I mean, I guess that's a good thing. Uh, I, I gotta go, guys. I got some calculus to do right now. So, I will see you guys tomorrow, which, thanks to the miracles of video editing, will only be a few seconds for you guys. Hey guys, once again, welcome to part three of the solar project. Now I know the first part of this video was a little hectic. The power was out and I was just scrambling to get that second battery installed in the system. The second battery is now installed. It only took like 15 minutes. And now the solar system has a total capacity of 40 amp hours as far as the battery bank is concerned. And next I'm going to add this 50 watt panel to the setup I have outside. So yes, I did undersize the system. I know some of you guys brought that to my attention in the comment section of part two of this video you can go ahead and say I told you so. Speaking of part two of this video, um, if you're not really sure what's going on here and you're not really sure why I'm doing this, go ahead and check out part one and part two of this video series. Both of those links will be in the description. The system works just fine as long as it's sunny every single day, but you know, that's not the case. Uh, if it's cloudy for a couple days in a row, I drain the battery bank and I can't use the system anymore. Um, so that's why I'm adding an additional battery. Well, I've already added an additional battery and I'm throwing another panel panel into the system. Uh, one fatal mistake that I made was that I read the Amazon reviews uh, regarding solar panels and I kind of took them as a valid source of information. Yeah, that was a really bad idea um, because a lot of the reviewers said that even when it was cloudy out, you know, these panels would produce 80% of their advertised output. And to a, in a sense, that's kind of true. Uh, based on their testing methods, they were looking at open circuit voltage. And yes, if it's cloudy out, you know, these things will We'll put out you know 19 to, to 20 volts still It'll still look like it's producing a decent amount of power uh, but then when you check out short circuit current um, it's only you know outputting a couple hundred milliamps at most uh, not really a lot of usable power coming out of these things when there is cloud cover as you can see, I am outside now, and I apologize for any distortion in the audio because it is a bit windy right now. Uh, but I've marked all my measurements, and I am ready to build the mounting solution for our second solar panel. I'm going to build it to the same specifications uh, to the one that is already out there, and it's been out there for a couple weeks, and that mounting solution has worked just fine. Uh, so I'm going to stick with it, and I'm going to build the exact same one. Um, so I'm going to fast forward everything right now, uh, put together a little montage, and then I will get back to you guys in a couple minutes.
Alright, so things are almost done. All I have left to do is to wire everything up and then the system will be good to go. I also have to clean everything off because my dad came through here with a pressure washer and just coated everything in dirt. He was trying to clean the sidewalk, but it just splashed all over here. Um, so I gotta clean that too and then uh, the system will be back up and running. Uh, the mounting solution actually turned out a little bit better than I thought it would. Uh, I did have some issues earlier on. Some things came out lopsided, but uh, in the end, uh, it didn't really matter because I could make adjustments as I went along and as you can see it turned out pretty good and I didn't have to use wire on the back of the panel like I did with this one uh, because it's just so sturdy there there would be absolutely no point uh, at this point in adding any wire to the back And with that, the solar system is complete. And check it out, the sun did decide to come out for a little bit. There's still a lot of cloud cover in the area, so I'm kind of hesitant to go inside and check how much current both of these panels are pushing, uh, because every time I do go inside, you know, cloud comes back and uh, obstructs the sun. Uh, so as you can see, I did clean off the panels, nice and shiny now. I secured the wires using uh, some zip ties right here. Now in the end, I did not have to secure the top panel with wires like I did with the one down here. Uh, this one's using a much sturdier mounting solution and it needs a much sturdier mounting solution because it is a little bit more exposed to the elements. The fence is not guarding uh, it from the wind like this one. This one's kind of shielded from the wind by the fence but this one's up here and exposed so uh, it did need a sturdier mounting solution. You're probably wondering why I didn't do the same thing uh, with this panel down here. Well my dad actually mounted this panel down here. He was helping me out when I did the initial build um, and he built the base of the uh, little support system right here. Um, so he mounted this one. I really don't have that much of a problem with, you know, the way he mounted it because, as I said, um, the fence does obstruct most of the wind and I just, you know, I just went ahead and secured it down with these wires uh, just to give it a little extra structural integrity. Uh, I'm not really sure what else to talk about. I mean, uh, we are good to go right now. Um, I would like the sun to come back out so I can take some uh, measurements with my multimeter as I said earlier. Now I did get a couple questions about this setup that I have right here that I would like to address now. Uh, the main question is, you know, why exactly did you put it right here? It seems like a weird location for a solar setup um, and it is kind of a weird location for a solar setup because it's not really optimal. A lot of people just ask why I didn't put it on the roof and that's because I do not own this house. Uh, I, I did not have permission to put it on the roof. So obviously I can't, you know, just go up there and start slapping some handles on the top of the house. Uh, I would get some, uh, I would get some angry parents coming at me. Um, and you know, this is the only location where I had permission to build the solar setup. So, you know, I, I just built it right here. There's nothing else I could do about it. I was really determined to build this system. Um, so, you know, they, they were nice enough to give me somewhere to build it. Uh, I just went ahead and built it here. So I just want to mention one or two mistakes or issues that I ran into during this build. Uh, the first kind of dilemma that I had was how far to uh, angle this panel and to stick this post out right here because I didn't want it to block this panel right here. And as you can see, it's not really blocking this panel at the moment. Um, there is one hour, uh, the first hour where this usually receives direct sunlight. Um, this does obstruct the sunlight just a little bit. It leaves a shadow going down this side of the panel. Uh, but besides that, uh, it's not really that big of a deal. I know I'm going to get questions about that too you know oh isn't the top uh, panel blocking the bottom panel as you can see most of the time it is not now as far as the structure is concerned i did run into one small problem i didn't drill a pilot hole back here um which i should have and as you can see the wood did crack um so not too big of a concern but it is definitely an annoyance because i could have easily prevented that there are two more questions i want to answer before i end this video first off someone asked me if i used an online angle calculator to calculate the best angle to place the solar panels at no i didn't I I just kind of winged it. That is a good idea though, and I might use that uh, in the pre-planning process for the final system. Um, second off, uh, actually a couple people said that I probably shouldn't be placing the inverter that close to the battery. I'll go ahead and throw up a picture of the system right now. Um, I don't think that applies to sealed lead acid batteries, but I'm not 100% sure. So if I can get some feedback about that, I would really appreciate it. That's gonna be about it for this video, guys. I think uh, this upgrade ended up costing 140 bucks in total, which places the solar system uh, 
I think around the trial system around uh, four hundred dollars at this point. Which you know, if you think about it, it's really not that bad. That's about the price of a mid-range laptop. Um, and you know, I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun building this. I I like hands-on projects. It's really nice to get away um, from sitting at a desk all day and doing pointless busy work, which is pretty much uh, what college has been for me so far. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. That was a lot of fun. And I don't think I'm gonna have any more videos regarding the trial system. If I do have something to tell you guys about. About, I will uh, talk to you guys about it in a subscriber update, but I don't think I'm gonna add any more parts onto this uh, Until I actually get to the primary solar system build. Um, so once again, that's gonna be about it for this video If you have any questions comments or concerns you can go ahead and drop a comment in the comment section Oh, yeah If you want to build a uh, solar setup of your own and kind of model it off of what I have here uh, I will post a link to all everything I bought down in the description. So you can go ahead and check that out. Uh, don't forget to drop a like on this video. If you didn't like this video, please tell me why. And of course, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you want to support me, you can use my Amazon or eBay affiliate links. You can also support me by checking out my Patreon. All those links will be in the description. And of course, don't forget to drop a like on the Facebook page. Thanks for watching guys. And I will see you in the next installment of AA Computers and Technology.